Hey guys, welcome back to my series Inside My Micro Bakery. I'm Lily and I run my own small business called Lily's Loaf in South London. So welcome back everyone. It's been a little while. Um, I've kind of been running around quite a lot and I just haven't had a chance to sit down and pop open the camera and have a chat with you all. Um, so I do apologise for that but I am here now. So I think my last video was like a weekend kind of video visiting a couple small businesses in South London and since then I've been doing weekly deliveries, so my bi-weekly deliveries as well as a market if not two markets. I think, no, it's just been one market since the last video, um, but last weekend I was uh trading at the rookery market in Streatham so I was up early baking everything and it was actually my mum and my sister who held down the fort and they were working the stall um just because I had a friend's wedding that I was going to and I didn't want to let the stall just not happen this time because it's important for me to kind of keep a presence there and to have somewhere for local customers to come by and because it's just once a month that one I kind of wanted to keep it up um, and just have somewhere for customers to come and buy my bread and my other products if they wanted to come by. Um, so that went really well, they did a really great job. Interestingly they sold out two of the items within the first two hours so that's something that I'm kind of keeping track of, like sellout times, how long it's taking for certain products to sell out. So for example, all my morning buns sold out in two hours, or if not under two hours, the catch sold out in two and a half hours. But yeah, it's just kind of cool to see like which ones go fly off the shelves <laughs> as soon as we put them out. And then since then, I've actually, I've had a really lovely week because I booked in this course with, a master baker called Wayne Caddy and if you haven't heard of him um, I'll pop up a few photos here but basically Wayne has been baking for decades and he is a real master and true artisan baker. Um, he has won like the highest award that you can in France as a baker after competing in I think multiple competitions, world competitions. Um, but he's just a wealth of knowledge and experience and a fantastic teacher and he's so he was working at the school of artisan food who were running courses for amateur bakers for professional bakers too i think i'm not entirely sure but he was running courses there for a few years i think um but he's just started up his own set of workshops and courses in peterborough at Beam Baking um, and we heard about it via the RM2020 group a while ago and I was thinking of doing one of his micro bakery courses but I was just too late like they just sold out really really quickly so I knew I really wanted to learn from Wayne um, and kind of get on one of his courses but without taking too much time away from my business so I decided to go for the baguette workshop, baguette and decorative breads workshop, I think that's what it was. And so that happened just this Wednesday and I had such a wonderful day, I met so many lovely fellow bakers who run businesses all over the country from Isle of Man to Norwich to Sunderland, um, North London and yes, yeah, so many other places. Bristol um, and it was just so lovely to hear all of their stories, how they had gotten into baking, how they had started up their businesses, how long they'd been going for and just have like chit chats throughout the day as to like all sorts of different things and just kind of being like-minded and sharing the same passion. It's just like it's just so nice because I feel like you don't even have to break the ice or anything because you just have the same sort of interests already and you're all there to learn so yeah it was just a really lovely day and just nice to kind of get out of London and, and get out of my like little environment here um, because as you'll know like I work alone most of the time 
and sometimes it can be quite lonely like running your own business and you can get a little bit caught up in your head so I really really loved and felt I benefited from the social side of things uh, just spending the day learning with all of these fellow bakers and so what did we learn so I thought I was going to be learning how to make a baguette from start to finish but no, <laughs> I, was, oh, I, I didn't do that. Um, we started off the day with like a little booklet and a few kind of like basics for working with sourdough. And that's the thing with like bread making and baking in general that I love. You're just always learning every single day. And it was just good to go over these points and just kind of go back to the fundamentals and the basics of like temperature control is king. So we kind of went through a few little equations that I applied yesterday to my workflow, to my prep day. And my breads were gorgeous. They were really, really beautiful. Um, and it's just through kind of measuring the room temp, the flower temp, um, and then kind of taking an average of your mixing method, the, like the temperature of the mixer, and then combining that and then getting like your your water temp in place so that you'll have your desired dough temp um it might sound quite complicated but i feel like a lot of you guys will know what i'm talking about i can kind of go into more detail maybe in future videos if you want me to about this because it is actually really important when you're working with sourdough because the ideal dough temp is like 26 degrees celsius and it is very unique compared to like yeasted breads um, and like Wayne was kind of debunking a few myths about yeast and just like how like gluten and yeast it's been given a bad rap over the past few years and it really it shouldn't have that bad reputation because I completely understand um, if somebody's celiac and they medically can't eat any wheat or gluten just like I medically am allergic to dairy, eggs and nuts, and I literally could, touch wood, die if I eat any of those products. Um, but it's in the press, like gluten and yeast have been given like bad names. Um, but what it really is, what Wayne explained, it comes down to is just like the long fermentation period. And if the bread, if the gluten has been given enough time to ferment and break down, then it's actually really good for you. Um, so, and the same with yeast as well. Like if you're working with yeast in a baguette, so we did like a hybrid baguette, so half sourdough, half yeast, um, and it's completely fine. Like it's just the whole process of it. And if you're like respecting the grain, then that's like the main part of it. And there's actually nothing wrong with gluten or yeast um, if you're going about it in the right way instead of like supermarket supermarkets or factories making commercial bread and putting yeast in and then baking it within like an hour or two hours like that is not the same thing as like what a lot of artisan bakers like me are doing um, so yeah so I kind of got enough on a tangent but that's how we started the day and then we went on to learn all of these like decorative baguette techniques so we were um, doing like a kind of cocoa dough and putting flowers on and doing all of these like different scoring techniques and yeah it was just it was a great day and I would like to learn how to make a baguette from start to finish, but I think that's something that I can do myself and I can just practice with. Um, so yeah, so that's for the future and it's given me like a little bit of confidence to try that out. And uh, yeah, so it was just, it was such a nice day to kind of like spend a day in a new environment and meet loads of lovely people. So. I'm definitely going to be doing more of that in the future, I hope, and even just like pursuing work experience too. I've got a couple ideas that I've had for a while and that I've been trying to organise. I think it's not going to happen until later on in the summer, but I've got a couple 
places where I want to go and learn uh, soon. Oh yeah, so it's the Jubilee next week here in the UK. So I've been asked by one of my clients if I'd make something. Um, and I, w I did kind of think about it in the back of my mind, like, oh, what can I, what can I make for the Jubilee? So I'm thinking, I'm, well, I was thinking first of all of doing these like miniature Victoria sponge cakes, which I thought would be really cute, but I think I've settled on something else. So just like little shortbread cookies or like sugar cookies, sorry, sugar biscuits. I'm from England. <laughs> um, sugar biscuits or like shortbread biscuits and then icing them in like the shape of a of a flag or like a little corgi dog like the queen has um so that's kind of my idea for next week as like a little ode to the jubilee uh just as like a little extra fun product so i'm going to play around with that probably tomorrow or sunday on the weekend um, oh yeah, I wanted to show you this as well. So remember in my last video I was I had the idea of creating those protein bars for one of my clients, 40 Acre Forest. So I've been playing around with that idea and I finally got a recipe that I'm happy with and I'm gonna throw a couple samples to Sam tomorrow to try. Um, but basically this is the final product. I'm actually, I'm so happy with it. So I'll do like a cutaway shot so you can see. Um, but it's essentially um, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds. It's meant to have desiccated coconut in, but I completely forgot about that in the recipe. It's got cocoa butter in or coconut oil. I use cocoa butter because I just had some from like another mad experiment that I was doing. Um, it's also got in chopped dates and that is literally it. And it's based off a happy pear recipe, who I love, who you know I love. Um, and just simply some dark chocolate melted on top. And my thinking was, because this is for um, Sam's customers, a lot of them are commuters, so they're going to work, they'll be hungry on their way to work, but they might want something like that's gonna be fulfilling and satisfying, not fulfilling, satisfying is probably the right word, satisfying with like lots of good energy. Um, so that was my kind of idea that I just came up with for him. And so I'm gonna send him a couple samples tomorrow. Well, I'm gonna go and deliver him a couple samples tomorrow. Um, probably chop them into like maybe bar sizes. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure yet, but that is how it looks and I'm so happy with it. So I think next time, I'll probably thicken it up a bit. I'll probably pack it in in a smaller shape so that the bars are a bit thicker, a bit more substantial. Um, but I'm so happy with that. So yeah, that's kind of what I've got going on at the moment. And then also in terms of premises. So a couple of weeks ago, I actually went to view a property in South London. Um, I was so nervous about it because I always feel really out of my depth with these sorts of things and just because, you know, it's my first time looking at properties as a business owner and just kind of knowing what sorts of questions to ask and all of these things really, it's all new to me but I went in with an open mind and I just wanted to see the property. It was really great space from the outside but I decided not to go ahead with it because there were just a few things where I felt like the owner was still quite tied to the property and still wanted quite a lot of control on the property whereas I want to go in somewhere with like a fresh mind and put my own stamp on the place so yeah I mean it's just good to keep an open mind with this sort of thing but I'm constantly on like Zoopla or like right move, you know, like the estate agent websites, um, property websites for commercial properties in South London. So yeah, and I'm always like keeping my eye, eye out, like, oh, that, that would be a good place. Maybe that would be a good place. So I'm kind of just going about it slowly in my own time while I'm still building the business through markets, through um, events, through home deliveries and online as well. So 
that's kind of where I'm at at the moment, um, really. And yeah, I'm just, I feel like I'm in a good place, guys. And yeah, just growing it really, really slowly because this is my forever thing and I just want it to be a success. And I'm kind of getting as much as advice as possible from so many different people in the field who have been business owners, who have opened premises, who have worked in bakeries like at the top, who've worked in marketing for food companies, um, just like all sorts of different people, accountants, and yeah, like there's so much to learn. And it's, yeah, it's just really cool because just learning something new every day, whether it's like in baking or business or accounts or, yeah, it's just, it's just pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at at the moment really. And I think, I'm going to wrap up the video here. I feel like it was probably a bit short and sweet, but I just wanted to update you on what's going on at the moment at Lily's Loaf HQ and really hope you guys are well. Let me know what you want to see in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed my video on the RM 2020 and if you're thinking of getting that, definitely check that out. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys are all well. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe, let your friends know about Lily's Loaf and yeah, uh, send me a message, send me a DM, send me a comment below and I will do my very, very best to get in touch with you and hopefully answer your question um, as efficiently and helpfully as possible. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for all your support guys and take care. Lots of love. Bye bye.